Hello, welcome back to English 3, Unit 6, Part 2. This is Professor Neil and his TA, Yonghee. Hello, TA Yonghee's back for Part 2. Hello, and don't touch the fish. Ah. Uh... Yonghee's going to behave this time. No touching the fish. <laughs> Last unit, we went into discussion about active and passive sentences. So in English, there are active sentences, such as a fireman has saved a boy. And their reflection, a passive voice, the boy has been saved by a fireman. In this unit, we continue with practicing active and passive voices in the speaking to about birthday gifts. So speaking to birthday gifts. Emily received a lot of presents for her birthday. Take turns asking who they were from and practice answering the different forms. She did get a lot of presents. <laughs> yes, she did. So the first one is a watch. And you can see here we have who gave her the watch. She was given the watch by her father. Who gave her the watch? The watch was given to her by her father. Notice this slight variation was given to her by her father. She was given the watch by her father. The watch was given to her by her father. So, grammar. Yes, so there's a bit more, more grammar still to come in. But we're going to look at doing this with active and passive again. So we want to write both forms, one active, one passive. So I'll do the first one for you to show you how I would like you to do the exercise. So who gave her the watch? As I say, you want an active sentence and a passive sentence. So the active, her father gave her the watch. Passive. The watch was given to her by her father. Okay, so as you can see, as Kitty is doing here, take down the notes. Write down both active and passive voice for each time there is one question. So let's do the next question. So Yonghee, the question is the same again. Who gave her the coffee mug? Her co-worker gave her the coffee mug. Very good. You see down here we've got co-worker, co-worker. And the gift, coffee mug. So her co-worker gave her the mug. It's the active sentence. And the passive? Mm, the coffee mug was given to her by her co-worker. Yes, the to her is important. You could say the coffee mug was given by her co-worker. To her is kind of optional. Optional. Right? But we like to add it in there for emphasis. But to emphasize that it was given to her. Alright, take the notes down again. So, question again. Who gave her the tote bag? Active sentence first. Her friend gave her her the tote bag her friend gave her the tote bag and passive sentence mm, the tote bag was given to her by her friend yes so we say by her friend is optional in the passive sentence So one more. We'll do one more and we'll leave the other two for you guys to do practice at home. Who gave her the cookbook? Mm, her mother gave her the cookbook. And the passive voice? Mm, the cookbook was given to her by her mother. Okay, so see how they reflect each other. Right? Her mother gave her the cookbook. The cookbook was given to her by her mother. If you have any questions about any of the questions or answers in Speaking 1 and Speaking 2, please message me or leave a comment in the section below. That's the end of Speaking 2, Birthday Gifts. Now we're going to look at self-practice. So you can see there are two self-practice sections. Self-practice one, which is food facts. 
and self-corrected to, which is active to passive. It says, complete the sentences using the correct form of the be and past participle of the verb in parenthesis. So here you have the verbs in parenthesis. So you have to complete them by filling in the gap. So rice and noodle dishes are served all across Asia. So it's using the R, and you have to use the be form plus the past participle. So the point of this self-practice section is that one, can you see the bluish one next to the Han circle? Present, present progressive, past, past perfect, future. These are tense of verb. This is very important thing you need to understand. And then you have to check from sentence 1 down to 10, you have to figure out which one is subject. So for example, first one, much of the words coffee, is this singular or plural? Is this singular or plural? Alright, so that it's very important to use correct form of a B, whether you're going to use is or are. So, Professor Neil, will you show? This is a self-study section. We will read some of the examples to them, mm. but we're not going to show them. Mm. So we'll do the odd numbers. We'll do 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Yeah, when I say show, is it give some example, right? So number 1. What would you say? Much of the world's coffee is grown in South America. Number three. New crop seeds are being developed in laboratories. Number five. An enormous amount of food was wasted last year. Mm, grain farms were cultivated for over 10,000 years. Number nine, Professor. Again, number nine. Mm. More candy will be sold next Easter than last Halloween. So that is self-study. You can listen to us and then write the answers and fill in the gaps. And if you have questions, send me a message. But they're all in passive form. That is something to remember. All these sentences a passive form. And self-practice two, active to passive, change the objects in the active sentence into the subjects of passive sentences. So again, it's going to be self-study, but we're going to give you some clues here. So on the left, you have active sentences and you have to write them in passive form. So like here, Judy painted the bathroom the bathroom was painted green by Judy. This one is passive. This one is active. This one has the be verb. This one has no be verb. Okay. So here, Adrian made Sally happy. Sally was made happy by Adrian. The public will elect him president. Is in active voice. So the idea is you have to change it to passive. That's self-study. Do them. The answers are in the back if you wish to check. If you have questions, please send me a message. For now, we're going to move on to the more spe speaking parts of the unit. So classroom activity one. We are going to leave that one now because that requires a group of us and requires us to be in the classroom. But we are going to do the next uh, classroom activity right, in this video. So this one, Classroom Activity 2, American Inventions, we are going to do some of it together in the video. So you have information about famous American inv inventions. Your partner has information about those. But we, we are going to do the ones that you can see on the page. 
So here for airline, airplane, you cannot see a date. All right, for potato chips, you can see a year. Microwave, you cannot. So the idea is you follow the example. When was the laser printer invented? It was invented in 1969. You don't have to write it out in word form. You can just write the number form. So I'm going to go through and ask Yonghee when these things were invented. And if Yonghee doesn't know, that's okay. So as you say, you're going to write in passive form, passive form. The potato chip was invented in 1853. Okay, Yonghee, are you ready? This is like a timeline game. Yes, like timelines. <laughs> I can do guesswork. Yes. Yeah, guesswork is okay. Okay, we got ping to say. Let's get started. So this is the airplane. Kitty Hawk. Hmm? Kind of appropriate for Kitty here. <laughs> right. When was the airplane invented? Now, you've got no date, so mm -hmm. I'm going to let you just guess. Mm, my guesswork would say the airplane was invented in... 1920-something. 1920? Probably a bit earlier than that. Mm. Probably about 1904. But you, if you guys have the book, you can look at the back of the book on page 102 to check. Page what? Page 102. 102? Mm-hmm. Page 8. Ah. Oh, 105? Page 105. So when was the airplane invented? The airplane was invented in 1903. 1903. By who? Uh, doesn't say. Surely you know. I know the, like, the Wright brothers. Yes, by the Wright brothers. Yeah, that's what I was, I was like. How the, of course you, you know said the kitty hawk. So that's where it happened, I think. Okay. okay. So that's why I thought maybe there's someone else who invented it before Wright Brothers. Well, there was a Frenchman, but no one remembers who he is because he didn't film it. That's why. So unless yeah. you are airplane engineer, you can't really yeah. remember exactly. Make, make sure you carry it. Mm. All right. When was the potato chip invented? Mm, according to the book, 1853. So the potato chip was invented in 1853. And still very popular today. What is your favorite potato chip? I don't like potato chips. As an English person, Munster Munch. Munster Munch, the best. Or Hula Hoops, they're quite good as well. Or Walker's Crisps. Mm. Of course, in the United Kingdom, we don't say potato chip, we say crisps. And they were invented a long time before then. But I think it, they were invented in Belgium. Doesn't surprise me. They invent great things. All right, the microwave. When was the microwave invented? Mm, according to the book, it was invented. The microwave was invented in 1947. 1947? Wow. Not long ago. And it changed cooking forever. Maybe 1947 is after World War Two. After World War Two, so yeah. Probably during the war, scientists tested a lot. Yes, yes. And they probably needed a telephone to do that. When was the telephone invented? Mm, 1876. I know William Bell. Yeah. The, te the telephone was invented in 1876. Of course, these days, people use smartphones. Mm. So when was the smartphone invented? Mm, around 1999. But let me check the book. Ah, the smartphone was invented in 2000, millennium. Was it 2000? Mm -hmm. 2000, wow. Okay. So it wasn't an Apple phone that was the first one. Interesting. All right. Well, again, look up the information if you're curious. Do some research. The light bulb, as it says in the book. When was the light bulb invented? The light bulb was invented in 1878. 1878. Let's give one to Yonghee. 
When was the automobile invented? Mm, around the same time. 1893. The automobile was invented in 1893. In 1893. Oh, I thought it was invented before that. Okay. Guess the book is maybe right, maybe wrong. GPS. When was GPS invented? Mm. Oh, we got it there on the page. GPS was invented in 1994. And What does GPS stand for, Professor? Nick? Global Positioning Satellite. Mm -hmm. And people still get lost. So I guess it hasn't solved getting lost problems. When was the hamburger invented? Mm. Wow, that was quite early. Hamburger. The hamburger was invented in... 1896. The hamburger was invented in 1896. Wow, it's almost 125 years old. Happy birthday, hamburgers. Excellent. That was 10 cents back then. Phonograph, 1877. When was the phonograph invented? Phonograph was invented in 1877. Ooh, should have put the date there. I got it there. When was the film camera invented? Film camera is quite early. Uh, the film camera was invented in 1885. Yes, and it changed how we view the world very quickly. Up until the past year, Hollywood and places haven't stopped making movies for a very long time. Lumiere Brothers made film camera. They made the film camera? They were actually second. The first one was um, Edison, but Edison's film camera was limited usage. So Lumiere Brothers' um, film camera was the first one that actually made the film. Of the so train. The, yeah, the, the, the arrival of a Chiyota station was the oh. first film screened in the cinema. Good information, Yongi. Right. Mm, I love my movie All right, history. So, and yeah, we got the last one. When was the computer invented? The computer was invented in 1937. So, was it a computer? It was a technically computer, but they used the uh, different uh, system. Yes, of course. Uh, computers have advanced world and technology very much ever since. So yes, that was Classroom Activity, American Inventions. I hope you enjoyed that section. Right. Now we're going to move on to Easter Island for the listening section. Yonghee, have you ever visited the Easter Island? Mm, no, but uh, I read a story about Easter Island. Rapa Nui? Yeah, that is um, the Hollywood movie. Isn't it, it did become a Hollywood movie. Mm. What happened to the people of Rap of... Uh, Easter Island. Easter Island. That is the mystery, isn't that it? That is the great mystery. And they left these giant stone statues. Yeah, and many people argue the arrival of the Europeans destroyed their survivor because they carried the viruses. The viruses. Probably a virus wiped them out. But the, some people argue that it's because of the, uh, the lack of food due to the uh, sudden change of the weather. Could be, but it doesn't make sense when they're surrounded by ocean. Uh, many assumptions. Many assumptions. Many guess. Many guesses. Nothing's clearly understood. Yes, but it leaves a, a very mystical place, and yes, it's on the bucket list for somewhere to visit. It looks beautiful. It does look beautiful. Mm. It would be a wonderful place to visit. So we have the listening here. Listening. Listen to the news report about Easter Island. So I'm going to read it to you, and then Yonghee will give you the answers for the true or false. So we have, the statues were built by an ancient civilization is true. So number one, Easter Island is threatened by climate change. Two, it is located in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Three, it was first discovered by Europeans. Four, it was abandoned centuries ago. Five, its resources were o overused and diseases were introduced. Its economy now depends mostly on tourism. It is visited by over a million tourists every year. Its statues are being eroded by rising ocean levels. Mm, interesting. Okay, so here we go. Listening. 
Easter Island. Easter Island is in danger from climate change. Ocean waves are starting to erode the statues built by an ancient civilization. If good solutions are not found soon, the island may lose its culture for a second time. The small island is located in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It was first discovered by the Polynesians around 1,000 years ago. That is when its famous Maui statues were built. However, the island was abandoned centuries ago. Scientists believe that its resources were overused and that diseases were brought by European explorers. Today, the biggest problem for Easter Island is climate change. Last year, the island was visited by more than 100,000 tourists. If its statues were destroyed by rising sea levels, tourism will disappear from the island. This may kill the economy and affect all of the 6,000 locals. Time is running out for Easter Island. Okay, so that was the listening. Now I'll ask Yonghee to give you the answers for true or false. Alright, so Yonghee, number one. Oh, we've done the, that was the listen. So listen up for the answers. So number one, Easter Island is threatened by climate change. True. It is located in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It's not Atlantic Ocean, it's in the Pacific Ocean. So, false. False. It was first discovered by Europeans. False, there were people before Europeans. Polynesians. Four, it was abandoned centuries ago. True. Its resources were overused and diseases were introduced. True. Its economy now depends mostly on tourism. True. It is visited by over a million tourists every year. First, it said 100,000 tourists. Its statues are being eroded by rising ocean levels. True. Yes. Because the global warming melts the uh, ice from North Pole, you know, Antarctica. So make the uh, sea level goes high. So those stones get washed out. Yes. So be good to nature. Let's try to save the planet together and save the Easter Island statues if possible because they are quite grand. Lastly, we have the reading section about pizza. Do you love pizza, Professor I think Neil? we all love pizza. What kind of pizza do you love? Pepperoni, pepperoni, anchovies. Yeah. Gorgonzola with uh, honey. Oh, sounds good. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Ooh, maybe a good time to order some pizza. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow. All right, read the article and find and underline six more passive sentences and write about them active. So, first thing, read the article. Read the article. After you've read the article, Look for the passive sentences. So I'm not going to read. So I'm going to read it to you quickly. So here we go. Bread has been baked for over 7,000 years by people in Europe. Many historians also believe that the ancient Greeks flavoured their breads with herbs, onions and garlic. In Persia, evidence of cheese-topped breads has been found by archaeologists. In the 16th century, the name pizza emerged for flatbreads in Naples. Those flatbreads were considered a food for poor people by the Italians. They lacked flavour. Fortunately, tomatoes were brought to Europe by explorers. By the 18th century, pizzas looked similar to today's pizzas. The range of new toppings was also described by Ali Dumas. According to him, customers in Naples could order oil, lard, tallow, cheese, tomato or anchovies on their pizzas. In the 19th century, pizza crossed the ocean to America. At first, p 
pizza was consumed by Italian immigrants to the US. The popularity of pizza grew enormously after World War II when American soldiers came home from Europe with a love for the tasty meal. Nowadays, pizza is enjoyed by people all over the world. The ancient snack has truly become an international favourite. Okay, so I'm going to point, so search through and look for the passive sentences. To help you, I'm going to put some arrows to point them out. So for the passive sentences, look for the arrows and then underline the sentences. Alright, so those sentences you now need to change into passive, into active voice. So the first one was done for you. Bread has been baked for over 7,000 years by people in Europe. People in Europe have baked bread for over 7,000 years. So I'm going to just click and read them. I'm going to put them into active voice for you. In Persia, archaeologists have found evidence of cheese top breads. Number two, the Italians considered flatbreads a food for poor people. Number three, fortunately, explorers brought tomatoes to Europe. And number four, Alexander Dumas described the range of new toppings. Five and six, these are five and six, are going to be put in homework. Yes, we love homework. Well, you, I do, because I don't have to do it. You have to do it. So that was the reading. There was a lot of grammar. Hopefully that was useful. Ah, oh, so here's the grammar section. These grammar reviews are for self-study. For self-study. Do in your time for self-study. If you have the book, do them. If not, wait till you get hold of the book. But now, that's the grammar section. That was the end of Unit 6. We are now halfway through the course. Oops. Let's go back a bit. Thank you for joining us at English 3 with Professor Neil and his TA, Younghee. TA Younghee was here with yeah. Professor Neil. Yes, so that's the end of Unit 6. Have a nice day, have a nice week. Thank you for joining us and bye. Bye.